Hello and welcome back to our uh, Cooperative Ministry Questions podcast. Uh, we're grateful to have you with us. We got to get a better name. We do. We really do. And as soon as we do, does that you have, do you have to reset the series back to zero if you change the name? Yeah. Or does it just and count all the new episodes? It rolls again. off the tongue quite <laughs> nicely. <laughs> we are glad you're with us. Uh, this is uh, I don't even know what episode it is. Are we on the Return of the Jedi one? Or this is a I think six? It's six. Six. Episode uh, six. Episode yep. six. At any rate, this is the the podcast following the conclusion of our Nehemiah series. Yeah. The series on rebuilding. Um, I have loved this series. Nehemiah is a book I think I visit annually. Hmm. And it's wonderful for us to be able to go through together. Um, we'll jump right in. You did the bulk of the teaching on this on this series. And, uh, and a fine job you did, sir. Uh, what do you feel is the biggest takeaway from this study we've done? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think it's, it's easy in, um, in teaching series, maybe your sermon series, like to just simply say, what is the point that we want people Hmm. to take away? Right. Right. Which isn't always necessarily (laughs) like, you know, the, so, so obviously like the <laughs> easy is really about giving, is right? it really about giving the but, easy answer is to say, well, it's about, you know, it's about the ways in which we need to rebuild. Mm. But I think mm-hmm. that's to miss the overall sort of arc of what's happening. Sure. And as we've talked about, so, so yes, there are some very practical ways in which, uh, you know, Nehemiah leads the rebuild for Jerusalem and the spiritual disciplines and, and that type of stuff that are engaged. Is that sure? So, yeah. so you get, you know, you get, uh, right from the very beginning, you get this heart of, of mm. grief and awareness to what's going on, his move to prayer continually. And then, and then just very practically speaking, sure. the wall needs to get rebuilt. And yep. so, you know, he's got to get people motivated with a, a shared vision, yep. doing some work together. And they've got to overcome obstacles. Handles the resistance. Right. And so, you know, all of those very practical things, we could flip and we have said, Mm. listen, Mm -hmm. like we're going to enter into seasons of rebuild. We are in a season of rebuilding, both personally and corporately, um, you know, in in our in our own lives, in our families' lives, Mm. in our churches' lives, um, in the church, sort of maybe even, you know. Uh, we, I think, are all in a season of rebuilding. There are going to be some really practical things to do. But I think that the overall arc, like the narrative arc of Nehemiah, um, from beginning to end has been moving us toward this deeper reality mm. that, that the, um, you know, I think we use language like scaffolding, mm. right? Yep. So yep. The, the practical ways in which um, Jerusalem needs to get rebuilt here are really only steps toward what God ultimately wants to do, sure. which is to rebuild the people. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I think like the turn that you and I both made in these last sermons, hmm. um, both like as we prepared for them and then wrestled with it ourselves and then preached on Sunday is that that's really like a turn to the gospel. Hmm. Yeah. Because like yeah. at the, at the end of the day, um, you know, n- none of the rebuild, mm-hmm none of the rebuilding that we are going to do Mm -hmm. matters one iota unless it allows acts as scaffolding Mm. for God to get at our hearts. And, and I think like that's, that's the heart of the gospel is to put these things in place so that God can continue to unfold what he wants to do, what God wants to do in the world and in our own lives and in our churches, lives and our communities. And so, um, you know, like that was kind of the final turn that, that both of us made. And Mm. I think that that, like, if I were to say, and this is like a long rambly way of saying, (laughs) um, you're if good I, company. It's fine. If, it's if fine. I yeah, if I want, <laughs> we need a host. We need like somebody else. <laughs> I do. That's interesting, guys. Back to my question. So yeah. the, the 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 if if there's one thing that I want people to hold on to, mm. I think it's that ultimately there's something that God wants to build or rebuild mm. into you as a person created by a creator. Mm. And there may be practical, physical things that need to be a part of that. Sure. But don't lose sight of ultimately what God wants to do, which is mm. to rebuild us as a people. Wow. And uh, so as we rebuild, like, and I'll just kind of land it as, you know, as a congregation. Sure. Um, 
you know, we're going to talk about, we have been talking about rebuilding ministries. Yep. What gets rebuilt? What gets thrown out? Right. What yep. of the last two years do we need to hold on to and remember? And yep. what do we need to grieve and then move away from? Sure. Um, what from pre pandemic makes it into like post pandemic church life? Sure. All of those things, none of them matter. Yeah. Unless they actually help God get at if they our hearts. Tied back to that other thing. Yeah. And I think that's such a prevalent message, uh, poignant message rather. Uh, for this time and place in history. Um, Cause there's so much that we can do on the outside. Mm-hmm. So much that we can do. You can work on uh, your health. You can work on your home. You can work on, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's so easy because we all know what, how good that feels. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you splash a, a fresh coat of paint on and it's like, mm, this room feels good still not using the room well and i'm gonna go back to what it was that made me feel anxious about this before same thing the work we can do on ourselves on the exterior um doesn't always equal change on in in the heart in in our character and and i and i love the way you you boil that down that like really uh Sometimes we focus so much on the, yeah, once the wall's rebuilt, I'll be good. Mm -hmm. Once I take care of of this, if we could just define this, if we could just fix this thing about our building, if we could just do this thing about our worship or this thing about my family. If our heart isn't first and foremost about that heart, about about God being in our uh, formation of character and, Mm -hmm. and the person on the inside, none of that other stuff matters. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think we're, I think we're really good as human beings at, at like shirking responsibility. You know, there's a lot that, uh, that we can look to. So Mm. when, I think when we have this deep sense that something needs to change in us, we look at all the external pieces on the board that we can move first. And so, you know, in church life, one of the things that I think it, it kind of manifests in is, well, I'm not getting what I want out of worship on Sunday. Therefore, worship needs to be tailored to my wants, Mm. because if I'm not getting something out of it, then it needs to change so that I can benefit from it rather than saying, um, maybe you're approaching this with the wrong heart or the wrong spirit. Mm. Or maybe you need to put something else into it, right? Mm. It's very easy for people to have ideas sure. for other people to implement, <laughs> yes. right? Or ideas about and what... We say that entirely humbly as pastors. Right. We have lots of ideas for other people. <laughs> Tons of ideas. You ask us how to fix the denomination, but we got it. We have books, books written, ready, ready to go of all the ideas that, that we could do to fix. No, I don't mean to to diminish what you're saying. Sure. Absolutely true. But, but, um, you know, I, th- I think that, uh, we, you know, we chronically lack self-awareness. Mm. And so mm. just to remember that, um, you know, just because mm. something, just because you want for something to mm. be a certain way, doesn't actually mean that that's going to be what's most beneficial, mm. even for your own, sure. for your own spiritual health. Yeah. And so, you know, as you're saying, like, you know, you throw a fresh coat of paint on a room, you still misuse that room, whatever, like you, you, uh, you know, one of the, one of the biggest trends, right. When we were growing up is like, let's put a pool table in the youth room and yes. a TV and Xbox and we'll you know paint we murals. Need to do? We need to let the, the youth paint a mural the way, right. the way they want to paint. Right. It. <laughs> and, and, you know, surprise, it, it may be spiked a tiny bit of interest for a short amount of time. Yeah. If at best. Yeah. But chances are it was just like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the lipstick on a pig type of thing. Like, you, yeah. you, you know, you need to get at <laughs> yes. what's below yeah. the, the, you know, what's what's actually at issue. Mm. And uh, so, you know, I, th- I think that as we as we continue to wrestle through this idea of rebuilding, mm. we need to be very careful that we don't just move. Well, I mean, like this is a common phrase in our denomination right now, but like we're not just moving chairs on the Titanic. Like at some point yeah. you got to patch some holes and you got to bail some water. Yeah. And at some point you got to stop bailing the water and actually identi- you know, identify where it's coming in from. Like not that that would have done any good on the Titanic, but <laughs> like you get the point well. that we can, <laughs> we, we can focus far too much mm. on um, those things that maybe feel good. It feels like we're doing work mm. and we are doing work, but it's only ever 
getting at surface level issues and sure. not and not you know allowing it to to sink deeper into who we are sure what we do is important yes. what we do speaks to who we are um, and oftentimes we talk about what we do you know having an impact on who we are for mm-hmm. sure that's like the whole the whole point of spiritual disciplines mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you yes. have to actually allow it to right and you know yeah. what we do can feel good but we can also avoid mm-hmm. it, you know, really sinking deep into our souls. And I, I mean, not to jump back on something that we've said weeks ago. Um, and I mean, heck, those of you at Family Church will know I say this all the time, but it's it's that both and. It's not just about serving. Mm-hmm. That can be a, a, a distraction. As we said, if if the work stopped at, after steps one and two, mm-hmm. if they rebuilt the temple and rebuilt the walls, and stopped there, um, the story's not done. Yeah. The, the sequence isn't complete. And if they had come back and simply said, all right, guys, we're going to worship, and they're like, yeah, but the temple's destroyed, man. Like, how can we do this? No, we're going to worship. Our enemies are literally pouring into the gates and killing us. We're going to worship, guys. We're going to read the law. Right. There's people abusing one another here, man. Like, they're robbing from each other. It's both and. Mm-hmm. And it, it, that, that is, as you said, it's the, the action coupled with belief. It's the belief coupled with action. And we, I think, at, to your point earlier about sometimes the ideas that we have are often because we because we do wrestle with things and we struggle with differences of opinion and, and, and where other people are coming from that we tend to, um, you know, vilify the thing that, that isn't first for us, mm-hmm. uh, and really throw the baby out with the bathwater mm. and say like, because I'm wrestling with this thing that you're suggesting we do, we need to put a hundred percent of our effort into who we are. Mm -hmm. And then we miss a big piece of who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And inversely, we can put way too much emphasis into what we do, hundred percent effort into what we do and miss who it is that Jesus wants us to be and miss another huge point of who Jesus was. His life wasn't just about service and his life also wasn't just about the the coming kingdom. Mm -hmm. It was both of those things in beautiful, beautiful, har- perfect harmony, you might say, in the person of Jesus, that it is perfectly exemplified. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think so. None of us is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I think that as you read the, as you read, as we've read Nehemiah, mm. <clears throat> as you read the Gospels, you definitely see like an order to, uh, sure. how even these things are unfolded, like you're saying, right? So, mm. you know, what was most important? It was most important that Israel return to worship and, you know, get get reminded of who they are and yep. whose they are, their relationship to God, the covenant, all of those things mm. were of first importance. Yes. But it's exactly as you've said, if if Nehemiah and, I mean, you know, if, if Ezra had just simply started saying, hey, yeah. this is the only thing that matters. Right. So, but, well, hey, buddy, like very quickly, you're going to have no people to talk to because, yeah. like you said, <laughs> no wall, uh, opposition, opponents, war, uh, you know, famine, all of these things. Yeah. Injustice and, at the, you know, the abuse of people. Yeah. yeah. And so there's an order in which it unfolds. Mm. So you have these physical needs mm. met. And it's in the meeting of those physical needs mm. that the truth of who this community is, is mm. able to be unfolded. Yes. Right. Yeah. And God's able to get at their hearts. And mm. um, it's like this hierarchy of need. Sure. Right. If you, and we've talked about this, if you, you know, give a tract to somebody who's yes. like, God, I, like, I'm, I'm just really hungry. Like at the end of the day, well, it's okay because Jesus loves you. And as long as you, when you die, you go to heaven, everything will be fine. We're like, well, chances are that person is going to walk away feeling unloved further from the gospel than they ever have. You know, there are far more people. Mm-hmm. This is not a stat. I don't know. You know, I, this is not backed up by anything. I know what you're going to say. And I think it's, if our first inclination is to disprove it, I think that says a lot about our heart. Sure. Go ahead and say it. So, okay. So I think, I think there are probably more people alive right now who are not Christian 
because they know a Christian. Mm -hmm. Then there are Christians who became Christians because they knew a Christian. And like, maybe you have to, you know, not include like parents and children in that. Pause that and go back. But just like, just listen to it. Like, I, I do think that those of us certainly who have inherited mm-hmm. r- institutional religion, yep. right, need to be very careful of the order in which we present the gospel. Yes. Because, you know, again, we, we see this in Jesus's life. Mm-hmm. As Jesus is unfolding who he is, mm-hmm. In many ways, his miracles are acts of service. Mm. His disciples come to him. Hey, Jesus, we got to send all these people home because there's like 5,000 men here. So like women, children, like there's probably like 10 or 12,000 people yeah. and they're all hungry yeah. and we don't know what to do. And Jesus is like, well, they're hungry. Let's feed them. Yeah. And a miracle yeah. unfolds. But let's not forget that yeah. that's a very practical need. Jesus washes the disciples' feet, right? It's in these acts of service, Mm -hmm. literally washing like dust and junk from the road and just saying, you know, it's it's a love, it's a friendship, it's a deep connection that is Mm -hmm. unfolded in a very practical need. Hey, Jesus, we just walked a long time and we're tired and sore and dirty. And like, you know, you get to where you're going on a vacation, you get to where you're going after a long day of travel. And like, what do you want to do? Like, I want to have a shower and like, you know, get get rinsed off, cleaned off, maybe get some food, crash and sleep. And Jesus says, hey, let me use this as an opportunity to serve you. It's in those practical acts of service that A, miracles are unfolded. Mm -hmm. B, the identity of who Jesus is is unfolded. Further. And further, yeah. yeah. And then... Jesus finally goes to the cross, dies, and is brought back to life. And then the disciples go, okay. If he had died and come back to life, like at the very beginning, gospels open. Jesus is like, hey, guys, I just died and came back to life. You want to follow me? Right? Like there is a, there's a logical sequence to the way Jesus actually unfolded who he was. There's a beautiful sequence to all of this. And I, I think we miss that sometimes because we're sitting on the finished book side of Christianity, of our faith. Yeah. We forget the sequence that people need to go through, especially, as you said, as people who are raised in faith. Yeah. Because for us, it wasn't necessarily, maybe it was a, there was a moment of awakening, but we don't have that same story of discovery that other people do. And it's important to recognize that. Mm-hmm. I was just like, as you were, as you were going through those examples. So like how much shorter do the gospels become if at those moments of need, Jesus goes, all right, that's it. Let's wrap it up. Right? Like that moment. So he's yeah. teaching. Yeah. And then the disciples come to him and say they're hungry. And Jesus says, all right, well, this was good. Not my problem. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. The people go home. The ministry is over. The teaching is over. The revealing is over. They have, and it's not, friends, it's not to say, I mean, well, it, it is to say, your, your point on Sunday, there's what next? Mm-hmm. There's The work is not done. We don't hit a moment where we go, well, I've said enough and uh, and that's it. Yeah. That's when the serving starts. And even even in the story of Nehemiah, to jump back even further to what you said, you know, we're not Jesus. Sometimes as Christians, we hop over the Old Testament Hmm. because of how different it is. Mm -hmm. And it is different, for sure. It's a it's a people that did not know Jesus, for sure. So it is it is rule based. There's not as much grace. (laughs) There's a lot more violence. Um But in Nehemiah, we see somebody who does not for one second pretend to have it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we have Jesus as the example, and we see it all the time. I mean, heck, one of the reasons I love Peter so much is that he reminds me of how how okay it is to mess up, how unexpected it is to mess up. Yeah. Um, But the Jewish people, they didn't even write God's word, God's name out because of how revered it was. They would never for one second pretend to be the the, the holders of the perfect example. Mm-hmm. And yet God set them up to be that sure. <laughs> entirely. But like, again, just that, that simple realization in Nehemiah, we have a man who's serving God, not trying to be God. And so frequently as Christians, we forget that we're serving God and, and it's not 
the gospel doesn't depend on us. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we have an important part to play in it, and we don't get free reign to do whatever we want because God will fix it. But friends, have a little more faith in who God is <laughs> to to work with who we are and that we don't need to be the judges, the... Anyway, yeah, that's a bit of a rant. So <laughs> isn't just this whole series of podcast episodes... <laughs> And that's the end of rant one. Well, Thanks, friends. <laughs> yeah. Episode two, rant two. No, like, so, I mean, just to bring it back, I mm-hmm. think, to like a a practical mm-hmm. landing to conclude for today. And this is going to be the shortest episode. Yep. We finally did it. <laughs> um, like, I, I do think that as, as, as you're, as we have been wrestling this through, mm. Uh, maybe the best thing for us, and, and, you know, and I think here's a challenge mm. is we, you know, and you and I being like children of the Reformation in sort of our faith mm-hmm. and denominational heritage, mm-hmm. certainly in our church mm. denomination, sure. have erred to, you know, very strongly toward the if I teach you the right theological belief, mm-hmm. then that will equate to deep spiritual practice. It will equate, equate to like depth of relationship with God and mm-hmm. salvation, however you want to define those things. Yep. You know, we've, we've said, if, if I can convince you mm-hmm. that my theology or this theology is correct, mm-hmm. then you will, you be will saved. be saved. And that's a very, very, you know, on the, on the one hand you go, okay, yeah, I see the logic there. And it's a beautiful heart. Right. Right. Like, but I, I, but I think right now we live in a cultural moment where it can, that can very quickly do damage. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not because, you know, not because somebody has got a bad heart, not because somebody's intentions are wrong. Sometimes our delivery is wrong. Sometimes people's intentions are are wrong yeah but yeah. but i think that if you know f- as a very practical way to land this whole series mm. we need as christians in 2022 to look for the scaffolding mm. that needs rebuilding to look for the walls that need rebuilding mm-hmm. there's this line earlier in the old testament right where the wall is destroyed and god's got this line where he says i, I looked for someone Mm. to stand in the gap, and I found no one. So contrast that to Nehemiah, who goes and and actually stands into the gap. Yeah. And fills it and rebuilds it. Yeah. And that, I think, is the heart of the gospel for 2022. Yes, you need to understand, like, there are theological concepts that are Mm -hmm. good and healthy to understand. Yes, we need to be able to have those conversations as Christians, as followers of Jesus. Yes, as churches, like, we need to wrestle these deep things out. Absolutely. I'm not saying throw theology out with a bat. Like, you know, what I am saying is for for you and I, for followers of Jesus, every single day, we need to look for the gaps in the walls. We need to look for what needs to be rebuilt. We need to look for the temples that are destroyed. We need to look for the ways in which we can practically mm-hmm. rebuild the scaffolding yeah. in people's lives, around people's hearts, yeah. so that yeah. we all become positioned for God to rebuild yeah. us. Yeah. And that's not an admission that there are no gaps, mm-hmm. right? Which is somehow how that message sometimes how that message gets reshaped that by being a people who are looking for the gaps to stand in those gaps we are somehow saying there is no gap Mm -hmm. that because i stand with you i am in uh full support of of everything you do and everything you have done and Mm -hmm. everything you will do and that there is no change needed in your life that's not the same Right. Right. Like to love someone is taking them as they are. And and I think serving them where they are. Yeah. Yep. Right. Like it's, it's the age old, whatever adage thing, statement, (laughs) sentence, thought, you know, um, I think my, one of my theology professors, you know, said, said, would you rather live life next to your neighbor Mm. And then when your neighbor's spouse, partner dies, you know, approach them and say, hey, there's hope because God loves you. Or would you rather, you know, join the car club Mm. 
that that neighbor's a part of. Grow a real friendship that lasts, mm. that bridges gaps, that stands with, so that, not even so that, but when these moments of life come, mm-hmm. you're able to stand with them and love them where they're at, right? Like it's, that's, I think at the end of the day, like that's the, the practical difference right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you say, hey, do we wait until a right, a right moment and then just tell people the right thing? Or do we love and yeah. serve people where they're at because they're valued and loved by God, by their creator and need to know it and need to feel it, need to experience it. And that's it. That, uh, like at the end of the day, that's what you're called to do. That's what we're yeah. called to do. Yeah. And it's, it, that's the beautiful both and. Yeah. Right. Like it's you said, it's if we're not helping folks, if we're not living where people are, helping them be seen for who they are today, then what we have to say about who they could be or who God wants them to be falls on deaf ears. Yeah. Falls on deaf ears. And it's, you know, in our in our homes, we know it. Our kids trust us because they know we see them. The moments when I have the the greatest connection with my kids are not the times when I'm telling them what to do or uh you know it's it's meeting them where they are and sharing in their joy or sorrow mm-hmm. right like it's i think the times when i sit with my girls when uh, or any of them tommy heck that kid's got crocodile tears for days man when he feels stuff he feels it hard um but to sit with them and help them feel seen mm-hmm. so that i can speak hope and healing those are big moments Yep. Big moments. And like, here's the beautiful way of how Nehemiah ends, mm-hmm. right? So Israel once again is messed up, as do we all. Mm-hmm. And Nehemiah goes and he corrects them. He's a little less pastoral than we would say would be appropriate. Um, yeah. But it's not a God is done with you. No. It's a, all right, let's get this wagon back you know, up on its wheels and moving in the right direction. Like, let's put the train back on the tracks. Let's yeah. rehitch the, the, you know, this analogy is falling apart pretty quickly, but like, no. you know, let's rehitch the, the train cars back together and get but, everything moving. And that's, you know, like, that's the way that, you know, God scoops up mm-hmm. a child yeah. and says, yeah, like I got you. I got you. Right. It's like your yeah. kid when your kid blows their diaper all over everything or throws up everywhere and you scoop them up mess and all and yeah. you wash them off yeah. because that's what a parent is supposed to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you don't love that kid any less. You know, you see you look down at that kid and you're like, yep, you're my kid. And it's going to be a great story to tell on your wedding day. <laughs> right, exactly, or in a sermon. <laughs> but yeah. but that's the reality of how God scoops up his kids. Yeah. And um, you know, I think that for us, we far too often see the mess and say, "Hey, go clean yourself off." Yeah. And then let me tell you how you messed up. <laughs> and I want to I want to end our time with yeah. uh, a passage I shared with Family Church on Sunday. Yeah. Uh 1 John chapter 4 verse 10, friends. Here is what love is. It is not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. We love you. We're grateful for the the, the, the space God has given us to share this good hope. And we pray that you're able to rest in that today. Yeah. Peace, friends.